Welcome to our summary and review of Robert G. Hartstrom's book, The Warren Buffett Way. We are group three of Corporate Finance Class at IPMI International Business School, also known as the Finance Project. Here are our team members. Hi, I'm Kasti. Hi, I'm Pago. Hi, my name is Hollis. Hi, my name is Gilang. And I, Tarun Badainen. We have been discussing the best investment strategy by Warren Buffett. In this video, we are going to share with you the high points of Buffett's way of investing that made him the finance guru we know today. The world's greatest investor. In the 1993 Forbes list of America's richest people, Warren Buffett had an estimated net worth of 8.3 billion US dollars. Of all 69 people listed, Buffett is the only one who obtained his wealth from the stock market. Buffett graduated from the University of Nebraska. While there, he read a book, The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. This book impressed Buffett so much that he went to New York to study with Ben Graham himself at the Columbia Graduate Business School. At the age of 25, in 1956, Buffett started an investment partnership. He had seven limited partners who contributed $105,000 and Buffett as general partner put in $100. The limited partners received 6% interest per year and 75% of the profits generated above this level. Buffett was paid the other 25%. Over the next 13 years, this partnership compounded investments at an annual rate of 29.5%. In 1965, Buffett closed the partnership and cashed out with a personal stake of 25 million US dollars. Warren Buffett used this. Uh, Warren Buffett used his capital to purchase a controlling interest of Berkshire Cotton Manufacturing, a well-established but struggling textile company. This company merged with Hathaway Manufacturing and also bought interests in two insurance companies in 1967. The combined company was renamed Berkshire Hathaway. When Buffett took control of Berkshire, the corporate net worth was 22 million. 40 years later, it had grown to 69 billion. It had long been Buffett's goal to increase the book value of Berkshire Hathaway at a 15% annual rate, well above the return achieved by the average American company. Since he took control of Berkshire in 1964, the gain has been much greater. Book value per share has grown from $19 to $50,498 at a rate of 22.2% compounded annually. The education of Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett's approach to investing is uniquely his own yet it rests on the bedrock of philosophies absorbed from four powerful figures, Benjamin Graham, Philip Fisher, John Bear Williams, and Charles Munger. Together, they are responsible for Buffett's financial education, both formal and informal. From Graham, Buffett learned the margin of safety approach, that is, use strict quantitative guidelines to buy shares in companies that are selling for less than their net working capital. Graham also emphasized that following the short-term fluctuations of stock market is pointless and that stock positions should be long-term. Graham advocated two approaches to buying shares. One, buy for less than two-thirds a company's net asset value. And two, focus only on low price-to-earnings ratio stocks. From Fisher, Buffett added an appreciation for the effect that management can have on the value of any business and that diversification increases rather than reduces risk, as it becomes impossible to closely watch all the eggs in too many different baskets. Fisher focused on companies with an ability to grow sales and profits over the years at rates greater than the industry average. Fisher suggested it was better to hold stock in a few outstanding companies than a large number of average companies. From John Bear William, Buffett learned a mathematical model for calculating true value. 
The value of a business is determined by the net cash flows expected to occur over the life of the business, discounted at an appropriate interest rate. From Charlie Munger, Buffett appreciates the economic returns that come from buying and owning great businesses. The frequent confusion surrounding Buffett's investment actions is easily understood when we acknowledge that Buffett is the synthesis for all four men. Now to the heart of the matter, the essence of Warren Buffett's way of thinking about investing. If we go back through time and we see all of Buffett's purchases, looking for the commonality, we find a set of basic principles or tenets that have guided his decisions. If we attract these tenets and spread them out for a closer look, we see that they naturally group themselves into four categories. One, business tenets. Three basic characteristics of the business itself. Two, management tenets. Three important qualities that senior manager must display. Three, financial tenets. Four critical financial decisions that the company must maintain. Four, value tenets. Two interrelated guidelines about purchases price. Not all of the acquisition will display all the tenets, but taken as a group. These tenets constitute the core of his investment approach. They can also serve as guideposts for all investors. In this chapter, we look at the first group, the characteristic of the, the business, and study how to solve a buffer investment decision reflect the tenets. Not all of buffer acquisition will display all the tenets, but taken as a group. These tenants constitute the core of his investment approach. They can also serve as a guidepost for all investors. In this chapter, we look at the first group, the characteristic, I'm sorry, the, character, the characteristic of the business and study how some of Buffett investment decisions reflect the tenants. Business and tenants one. Is the business simple and understandable? I'm sorry, under understandable from the perspective of the investor. That means you need to understand revenues, expenses, cash flow, labor relation, pricing, flexibility, and capital requirements, an exceptionally high level of knowledge. It means that investors should buy shares only in companies with their own circle of financial and intellectual understanding. An investor need to be realistic about what they do not do not know. Above average, results are most often achieved by doing ordinary things ex exceptionally well. Business plan two. Does the business have a consistent operating history? In general, the best level of profits over the long term are achieved by companies that have been producing the same product or service for a number of years. One of windfalls generated by, by an Unusual events are just too hard to reasonably predict. An investor should never ignore a current business reality because of some vision of future success. Look to buy a business which has shown it can reasonably weather different economic cycles and competitive forces. The best time to buy any business is when profitability has been interrupted for some external short-term reason. This can create a rare one-time opportunity to purchase a sound business at an unusual low price. Business planetary. Does the business have favorable long-term prospect? The economic world is divided into a large group of commodity companies and a small group of companies that own the franchise for their product or service. Commodity companies compete solely on price, with no differentiation between suppliers as well as traditional oil and gas companies. The commodities group, the commodities group now includes computers, automobiles, and airlines. By contrast, companies which own the franchise has have a product of service which is needed, has no close substitutes and for which an unregulated market exists. 
Ideally, a business purchaser will want to buy a franchise type of company. This company have an um, these companies have an appreciable margin of safety whereby prices can be raised to offset management mistakes. The other problem is a strong franchise for the soon attract competitors and such substitute products, which in turn leads to the creation of commodity market around that product or service. Whenever that happens, the value of the management becomes even more critical to the economic performance of the company. If, it, if it's not possible to purchase a franchise company, the next best option is to buy the lowest cost supplier in a commodity market. Over the long term, the lowest cost supplier always comes to dominate the commodity market. Management tenants is gentle and concerned on how and what to consider in an investment or an acquisition based on their management. Government is very detailed to know the quality of management. He even said that no matter how attractive the prospect of their business, we have never succeeded in making a good deal without a good person. These are some points that Buffett is always eager to know before he makes any decision regarding his investment, such as rational management, transparency of management, and also institutional imperative. Management cannot afford. Is the management rational? Buffett believes that the best manager is the one that always thinks and behaves like an owner of the company. Therefore, that management tends not to lose sight of the company's goal with the rational decision as well as increasing the shareholder value. Rational management is one of the most important things to look in the company. With the most important decision include the location of the capital and over time, deciding what to do with the company earnings, reinvesting in the business, or returning money to shareholders. These decisions are exercised in logic and rationality. Management plan 5. Its management can be with each shareholders. Transparency of management is one of the good company's character. Whether it shows in terms of performance they are willing to be given advice on, or a comment that can build the company to a better way. The transparency of management is willing to admit any mistakes as well as to share success and they are always communicating with the shareholders. But the respect managers who are able, who are able to communicate the performance of their company without hiding behind the general accepted accounting principles. Management 10 of 6. Does management resist the institutional imperative? The institutional imperative is the tendency of corporate management to imitate the behavior of other managers, no matter how silly or irrational their behavior may be. Buffett believes that the institutional imperative is responsible for several series, but is strengthenly common conditions. 1. The organization resists any change in its the current direction. 2. Just as work expand to fill available time, corporate projects or acquisition will materialize to soak up available fund. 3. Any business craving of the leaders, however foolish, will quickly to be supported by the detailed rate of return and strategic studies prepared by his troops. 4. The behavior of peer companies will mindlessly imitate. In conclusion, Buffett wants to work with managers who are straight shooters, who are candid with the shareholders as well as with the employees. He must also underline the business ethics of added significance since the outbreak of corporate scandals. Those are some management tenets of the world of the way, although there is no guarantee given. We are sure that those are the best way to maximize the investment and also will protect us from any fraud that may happen in the future. Financial tenants. In this financial tenants, he mentioned that not to focus on yearly results. However, 
you have to put more concern on the four or five years average. He also has a little patience with accounting slate of hand that produce impressive year-end numbers but little real value. Instead, he relies on a few timeless financial principles like return on equity, own earning, profit margin, and the value created. What is the turn on equity? Buffett believes we need to look whether a company achieved a high earning rate on equity capital, not whether it has consistent gain in earning per share. The, com the company annual performance can be easily seen from the return on equity, but there are some variables to be added in order to reach the objective. We all know the company can increase their return on equity by only increasing the debt to equity ratio. However, a good business should achieve good return on equity while employing little or no debt. So what are the company's owner earning? As an investor, we should be aware that accounting earning per share represent the starting point for determining the economic value of business not the ending point. Even a cash flow is not a perfect tool for measuring a value and often mislead the investor. Cash flow is an appropriate way to measure business that have large investment in the beginning and smaller outlay later on. And the problem with the cash flow is that it leaves out the critical economic fact capital in expenditure. So instead of cash flow, Buffett prefers to use what he calls owner earnings, a company's net income plus depreciation, depletion, and amortization, less the amount of capital expenditure and any additional working capital that might be needed. And what are the profit margins? We must be aware that a great business makes a lousy investment if management cannot convert all the sales into a profit. A manager of high cost operation tends to find ways that continually add to overhead, whereas manager of low cost operations are always finding ways to cut expenses. Buffett understands that for every dollar of sales there is an appropriate level of expense, but it can be tough when it comes to cost and un unnecessary expenses. And he is very sensitive about the company's profit margin. Each time a company announces a cost-cutting program, he knows that this company has not figured out what expense can do to a company's owner. Good managers attack costs as vigorously when profits are at record level as when they are under pressure. Has the company created at least one dollar of market value for every dollar retained? Buffett's goal is to select the companies in which each dollar of retained earning is translated into at least one dollar of the market value. He used a quick test. The increased market value should at the very last match the amount of the retained earnings. Buffett believes that if he has selected a company with favorable long-term economic prospects run by able and shareholder-oriented managers, the proof will be reflected in the increased market value of the company. Value tenant. Getting a piece of the stock market action can be tempting for newbie. Tells of other people's gain can make you wonder why you are squaring cash away in a safe, but not especially profitable saving account when you could be buying into funds that could help your money grow much faster. But there, there is a question before we invest on the stock market. How would you feel if you initially lost your money? Is this the right time to buy? Is the price is favorable? The stock market established price. Their investor determines value, but value and price is not necessarily equal. As Warren Buffett often remarks, price is what you pay, value is what you get. But however, 
price tell us nothing about value. Investors make their decisions based on the difference between price and value. There are two things that we need to concern. First, determine the value of the business. And second, buy only when the price is right, when the business is selling at a significant discount to its value. What is the value of the company? The properly value a business, you should ideally take all the flows of money that will be distributed between now, judgment day, and discount them at an appropriate discount rate. What is the appropriate discount rate? Buffett answer is simple. The rate that would be considered risk-free, such as long-term government bonds. Some academics argue that a more appropriate discount factor would be the risk-free rate of a return plus an equity risk premium. So that's what failing business is all about. Part of the equation is how confident you can be about those cash flow occurring. Some businesses are easier to predict than others. We try to look at the business that are predictable. Can it be purchased at a significant discount to its value? Basically, there are major ways to figure out the price of business. One is the company's ability to get generate sales, cash flow, and or profits. The second method is to value the company based on its asset, which method is used depends on the condition of the business and industry it is in. Warren Buffett is firm on one point. He looks for companies whose future earnings are predictable, as certain as the earning of bonds. If the company has operated with consistent earning power and if the business is simple and understandable, Buffett believes he can determine its future earnings with a high degree of certainty. Even though that is not always easy to control, but if the price isn't satisfactory, he'll pass. The margin of safety principle assists Buffett in two ways. First, it protects him from downside price risk. If he calculates that the value of a business is only slightly higher than its first share price, he will not buy the stock. And second, it also provides opportunities for extraordinary stock returns if correctly identified with above average economic returns and in the long run will steadily march upward. Now I am I want telling you uh, um, how to manage your portfolio. The investor now deciding with stock to buy is only half of story. The other half is a growing process of managing the portfolio and learning how to cope with the emotional roller coaster and that inevitably accompanies such decision. To reduce its essence, focus investing means this. Choose a few stock that are likely to produce above average return over the long haul. Concentrate the bulk of your investment in those stock and have fortitude to hold steady during any short term market situations. What? The focus investor golden rules. Uh, one, concentrate in your investment in outstanding company run by strong management. Second is, uh, limit yourself to number of companies you can truly understand. 10 to, 10 to 20 is good, more than 20 is asking for trouble. Pick your very best, your good companies and good part of your investment there. Think long term, 5 to 10 years minimum. Volatile happens, carry on. Focus uh, investment is an analysis of the broadly diversified high enough approach. Other focus investing stand the best chance among the active strategies of unfolding and investing of life. This is by investor in the
to patiently follow the protocol even with a period in the other strategies are we and so model protocolio is a combination of uh, three sem seminar ideas about finance from three power powerful minds. Harry Markowitz, a graduate student in economics in the University of Chicago, first quantified the relationship between the return and risk. Using the mathematical tools called covariance, he measured the combined movement of group of stock and used the determine the risking of an entire portfolio. We can see the sample here. Uh, one of the stocks are increasing and the other is uh, decreasing. So a combined of the stocks will be, uh, has a uh, gain uh, at, the, at the time. Uh, the increasing, the, incre the, the, the increasing stock will be covered the decreasing stock. All right, to complete the Warren Buffett way of thinking, we also need to pay attention to the psychology of money. Sometimes our illogical decisions are consistently illogical, and sometimes no pattern is discernible. We make good decisions for inexplicable reasons, and bad decisions for no good reason at all. The temperament of a true investor. As investors, we need to learn the basic difference between an investor and a speculator. The speculator, he said, tries to anticipate and profit from price changes. The investor seeks only to acquire companies at reasonable prices. True investors are calm. They know that stock prices influenced by all manner of forces, both reasonable and unreasonable, will fall as well as rise, and that includes stocks they own. When that happens, they react with equanimity. That means with calm temperament. They know that as long as the company retains the qualities that attracted them as investors in the first place, the price will come back up. In the meantime, they do not panic. The investor who permits himself to be stampeded or unduly worried by unjustified market declines in his holdings is perversely transforming his basic advantage into a basic disadvantage. To be successful, investors need to need good business judgment and the ability to protect themselves from the emotional whirlwind that Mr. Market unleashes. One is insufficient without the other. An important factor in Buffett's success is that he, all, he has always been able to disengage himself from the emotional forces of the stock market. We are going to conclude this video by quoting the Focus Investor's Golden Rose. Number one, concentrate your investments in outstanding companies run by strong management. Number two, limit yourself to the number of companies you can truly understand. 10 to 20 is good. More than 20 is asking for trouble. Number three, pick the very best of your good companies and put the bulk of your investment there. Number four, think long term, five to ten years minimum. Number five, volatility happens, carry on. Thank, Thank you for watching our video. video.